In this video, we're going to talk about how to reconcile a bank statement or a credit card statement in QuickBooks Online. So I'm in QuickBooks Online, then I'm going to click on the gear menu on the top right of the screen, and then under tools, I'm going to click on reconcile. Then on the drop down menu, I'm going to pick which bank account or credit card I want to reconcile. And let's say I want to reconcile this Chase Bank 8145. Now I'm going to bring a bank statement here on the screen and every bank looks different. And this is just a sample bank statement that I created. And essentially what I want to do is I want to make sure that the beginning balance that's already in QuickBooks, which in this case is 17,435.51 matches the bank statement right here, uh, which is right here. So, okay, perfect. So that beginning balance matches. We're good to go. Next step is I'm going to take the ending balance of the bank statement. And, and again, depending on your bank statement, you will have your own type of number in there. So we're going to put the ending balance and we're going to put it in the box here, which says ending balance. And then the ending date, that's always going to be the last date of the current uh, bank statement that you're reconciling. So in this case, I'm reconciling January 2024. And you see right here, where QuickBooks tells me that the last one that was reconciled was the one right before, which is December 2023. So we're going to put here 01-31-2024. And as long as I have my correct ending date, the correct ending balance, and the correct be beginning balance, I can now click on Start Reconciling and go to the reconciliation screen. Now, this is not as simple as coming in here and clicking on select all, yes, and it's just working. It doesn't work like that. Uh, now, sometimes when you connect QuickBooks to the banks and the only transactions you put in QuickBooks are the bank downloaded transactions, these will sometimes auto reconcile. And I'll create a different set of videos that have to do with uh, downloading transactions from the bank and the reconciliation process. However, in this case, let's just assume that we entered all these transactions by hand. So now what we do to make sure that our information essentially is complete and accurate is we are going to check the box on every single one of these transactions that show up on the bank statement. So I'm gonna bring QuickBooks here to the right-hand side a little bit. I'm gonna collapse the left navigation bar so we can have a little bit more real estate. And then I'm gonna bring the bank statement kind of like next to it. So you could try to follow along as much as, as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the actual uh, transaction. If I have it printed, I'm going to put an actual physical check mark on the paper. Uh, I'm just going to highlight it uh, in here using, um, using the highlighter tool in, uh, in my PDF uh, software. Okay. And I'm going to check it in here. So essentially that's the process. I'm going to check every deposit and every, uh, expense and every check and I'm going to come in here in my PDF software and mark it, uh, highlight each one. So I'm going to go through the process and we're just going to go uh, and kind of fast forward to this, but this is the process you would take with your own bank statement. Perfect. And then once you put check boxes, or in this case, I put, I highlighted them on the PDF. Once you mark everything off, and then you can double check and triple check that everything that was on your bank statement matches QuickBooks, you should see a difference of zero. Now, what happens if you have transactions missing? What if the bank statement says you have a transaction for $300 that you don't see in QuickBooks? Then you got to go find the transaction in QuickBooks, see if you categorized it to the wrong account. Or uh, if, if you've never entered it for whatever reason, then you, that's the opportunity to enter it right there and then. That's if you're missing transactions. If you have duplicate transactions that don't belong there, delete the duplicates. Go into the actual duplicates and delete them. And if you see any transactions that are not necessarily duplicated, but you don't see them on the bank statement, well, it's possible that if there are an outstanding check, maybe they'll clear on the next month. So you kind of have to wait until the next month happens to see if those outstanding checks show up in the next month. And then on the next month exercise, when you do February, you will be marking those together in that month. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna scroll all the way up. Notice that there's one check here from previous periods that literally um, just cleared this period. So uh, that could happen too, where you have something from last period that just clears in this period. So at the end of the day, that's, that's the, the idea, is that you get down to the difference of zero. 
and click on finish now. And as, as soon as you're done with that, you can click on view reconciliation report and you can look at the reconciliation report and you can print it, uh, save it as a PDF, whatever you want for your records for that. And essentially that's it. It, it does get a little bit more tricky. I mean, um, in, the, in the real world, you know, there's always going to be missing transactions, duplicate transactions, transactions with the dollar amounts that don't match. Uh, sometimes you'll have like deposits in QuickBooks that you have to match with multiple invoices and multiple payments. I mean, that stuff gets really, really tricky. I'm going to do a separate video uh, for online banking where I talk about matching transactions, existing transactions to downloaded transactions and how all that stuff flows through into uh, the reconciliation at the end. But that's it in a nutshell. Uh, reconciling is matching your QuickBooks to your bank statements or your credit card statements to make sure that all the debits, all the credits, beginning balances and ending balances match those statements. Anyway, I hope you like this video and it will make or should make your QuickBooks experience more enjoyable and I'll see you on the next one.